Hi there students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter topic. In this particular video, number 14, we're going to be looking at radiation and radioisotopes. This is really just an introduction to radioisotopes, which are unstable isotopes of different elements that become more stable by emitting radiation. We've had a look at a couple of different types of isotopes in previous videos, so now we just need to focus in on the types of radiation that are released as a result of the uh, radioactive decay of an unstable isotope. There are three important types of radiation that you should be aware of. Alpha particles have the characteristic of helium nuclei. That is, they have two protons and to neutrons. We can use this knowledge to help us to balance nuclear equations, which are slightly different to chemical equations um, for the main reason that we are not actually balancing particular atoms this time. We're actually transforming atoms from one form to another. But we can balance those by writing the alpha particle as a 2,4. You can also see this nomenclature for the helium nucleus also being a 2,4. And remember that that 2 is an alpha particle. These particles tend to be released when the nucleus is very heavy. And we know that once nuclei are larger than lead, um, then they're just always too heavy, and so they will always decay, and usually through alpha decay. Beta particles have the same characteristic as an electron, a high-speed electron, which goes whizzing out of the nucleus. This means that it has a negative one charge but effectively zero mass. Now it's not zero, but it's very low. But again, if we're going to be using this nomenclature for our nuclear equations, then we put a minus one to indicate the negative charge and, or the negative charge is equivalent to a proton and zero for mass. So this is how we denote beta particles. Usually beta particles are produced when the neutron to proton ratio is too high. What will happen is a neutron will be converted into a proton and an electron, and these two um, will cancel each other out. And of course, a, a proton has mass, but the electron effectively does not, and so there is your neutron. So the proton will remain in the nucleus, and the electron will leave the nucleus. And this is where we um, will be able to change our ratio from one to another. One good example of this is uh, carbon-14. And we'll explore that. We've already looked at it previously, and we'll explore it in more detail later on. The third type, which is basically just a result of uh, a nucleus having too much energy. Uh, and an example uh, of that uh, would be technetium-99. And this is the release of a gamma particle. This is a photon radiation with no mass and no charge. Um, this is a high speed photon. And it's released in order to try and reduce the amount of energy in the nucleus. So often gamma radiation accompanies the other forms of radiation. There's another type of beta particle I haven't talked about called a positron. That's something that uh, we may briefly look at in class at some point um, down the track. But at this stage, these three are fairly important for you to remember. Um, the other thing about radioisotopes is that we distinguish a radioisotope on its very important property of half-life. Um, we will do some calculations around half-life in class. But the other thing is that the radionuclear uh, radioisotope will release particles of radiation and those radiations will have two very important properties the property of ionizing ability and the property of penetrating power alpha radiation is strongly ionizing it has a very strong positive charge and therefore it is going to interact with electrons beta particles are less strongly ionizing probably about a mid-range because they too have a charge um, Gamma radiation has no charge and therefore is only weakly ionizing. But conversely, it has a high penetrating power. Okay, It's able to move through a large number of substances. Beta radiation um, 
is moderately penetrating and alpha radiation is very, very low. These important characteristics help us to determine the uses for different radioisotopes and we'll look at these in a little bit more detail in the next video. Thanks for watching.